Eleven fifteen. He must be eighteen or over. Now, just a few weeks ago, footballing legend and TV pundit Graham Soonis joined us in this year studio to tell us about his plans to swim the English Channel to raise money for a cause very close to his heart. And on Sunday, as part of a six-person relay team, Graham pulled on his wetsuit and completed the epic twenty-one-mile swim. Although I think it was a bit longer in the end, uh, in an impressive twelve hours and seventeen minutes, raising over one million pounds for charity. Look at that. Well, he hasn't had that much time to rest, but it's hot back over the. Channel. Hamilton Calais to join us live in the studio this morning. And this was all inspired by the very brave 14-year-old Isla, who's here with her dad, Andy, who swam the channel with Graham. Good morning to morning. all of you. Morning. It's so morning. lovely morning. to have you here as well. Actually, part of the team are over in our green room over there as well. They're taking a much-needed rest on the seat. This was only Sunday. Um, how, was, how are you feeling now? Normal. Um, I have to say it was tougher... I think I speak for we started to train for this at the same time. Yeah. So I, I, I would say it was tougher than, than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't factor in the, the sea is quite different when you get out into the, the open, open water, sea. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's the, the waves coming at you are not predictable. I mean, that didn't show any of it. But, and also doing it in the dark is quite. Did oh you start? God. What, what, what yeah, time did you start? I, well, Sean started us at 10 30 in the evening. Yeah. And then I was in at 12 30. You were in a. 1.30. Yeah. So you're swimming in the dark. Mm. Um, you're not watching where you're going. You're just looking at the boat. It's got a little light on the side. And you're trying to keep pace with that because that's taking you because you don't go in a straight line. You know, the, the, the boat is working out or the so captain's the working out the tides because you'd go nowhere if you end up swimming against the tide. So um, we ended up being... We ended up doing 30 miles. Oh, I know my the God. channel's 21-something, is yeah. it? So we ended up doing 30 miles. But in the dark, and then in my first, my first um, session in, and I think we all experienced it in the first session, you know, with the dark, a um, bit of the unknown, mm. um, and we're, you're swimming through jellyfish on occasion, so you're getting a lump of jellyfish. Fortunately, I never got stung. I think it was only Wolfie that got stung, was it? Oh, my and you're God. sort of pushing them out. Wolfie the sounds like a kind of SPA. That's a proper Wolfie name. Here or proper Wolfie name. Here. Proper name, yeah. Yeah. Wolfie, Wolfie there. yeah, there's Wolfie. Wolfie can handle a couple of stings, right? Of course I can. With a name like Wolfie. <laughs> and, and I've got to make the Steph is over there as well. We, we, we yeah, were who have we got over there? It's got Wolfie, we've got Steph, and then who's Sean. there? Sean. Well, Sean. well done, all Steph of and you. Steph and Sean, you need more animal-like nicknames. Let's get <laughs> <on. laughs> Sort that out. The thing is, you described this, and, I mean, what, what a challenge, and obviously mm. it was difficult in places, the whole thing, actually. So you have to have a good reason for doing yeah. this. And Andy, for you, there is no greater reason than the inspiration that's sitting next to you now. And you were thinking about Isla every step of the way. Yep, uh, it is inspiring. And what we were doing was a, a challenging thing, but yeah. it, it pales in some insignificance when you know, we're thinking about what the children and adults with EB go through on a, a daily basis. Mm. Um, at the moment, with very little pain relief and itch relief, and you know, it, it, it makes you want to um, help where you feel helpless uh, otherwise. So uh, by raising all this awareness, we've done a lot, but there's a lot more to go. Mm. You know, we've, we've taken a few steps or strokes forward, um, but there's a real long way to go for yeah. this. Yeah. But it's a great start, and we're really grateful for all the, the people who've contacted Deborah, the charity, to ask for more information. It's given the community with EB a real boost and a voice, so Good. it's fantastic. Good. Do you know, it's funny, Isla, you said that. We, you, you were watching uh, the action on the live tracker, weren't you? And you were saying the boost for the EB communities can be huge off the back of this. Yeah, it definitely is. It's going to be really huge. Yeah. What's it like watching it on the tracker? It was actually really exciting watching it on the tracker, um, seeing them get closer and closer to France. And then further and further away <laughs> when, you, <laughs> when you knew they'd done it. So. Oh, oh great. Um, and you, you're very passionate about this, aren't yeah. you? You're very passionate about campaigning yeah. um, and getting this message out, how important it is. Because living with this condition is difficult, isn't it, for yeah, you? And it can be incredibly painful. Yeah, it's painful for all the people in the UK and the world. But yeah. Where we be, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that is why when you heard Isla's story, Graham, you wanted to do so. I can see mm -hmm. seeing your face now. Yeah, I know you find this really emotional, the whole thing. Um, but you wanted to be part of this. And in fact, you are vice chairman of, mm -hmm. of Deborah um, because it is so important to keep raising awareness and importantly, money. It's, I, met, I, I was introduced to it five years ago and then 
within, I don't know, a couple of months we met. Yeah. And it just, it was just something, it was like something punched me on the nose. And when you spend an hour in this young lady's company, you're inspired by her. Mm. Yeah. Also, you realise the, the pain and the suffering she goes through every waking minute of her life. Yeah. And there's no, like, tomorrow will be better or next week will be better. It's Groundhog Day. Yeah. You, it's, it's like it's going to be a difficult day tomorrow or it'll be a really difficult day tomorrow. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. And what we have to do for Isla and other people with recessive dystrophic is somehow find some drugs, the clever scientists, find some drugs that make their life easier and pain-free, which they're not. Mm. Well, I mean, what the three of you have done over the last month or so, where we, you know, we had you on the sofa and you know, spoke to you so brilliantly down mm. the line, guys, is, like, I, I, I look at my news apps now, and you're there. Mm. You know, you, you are... You're getting in the phones and the living rooms and the windows of people all around the country and the world mm. to try and raise awareness to this. Mm. Andy, can you tell us a little bit about the condition for people that, if, they, if they don't know too much about yeah, sure. it? Sure, no problem. It's, it's, it's a brutal condition. I'd never heard of it until Isla was born. And it took a few weeks to understand what we were dealing with, but it's recessive. Well, it's a genetic disorder, skin blistering. And that's not just the skin you can see, that's the linings of the stomach, you know, the linings of the throat, the bowel, and everything. So people with certain types of EB are being damaged, wounded from the outside and the inside. And it's extremely painful and generates a lot of itch as the body tries to heal. And it's hard for... Um, you know, people to thrive because they're expending so much energy fighting difficult wounds. Yeah. Well, this is why uh, I think <laughs> straight from getting back from Calais on Sunday uh, yesterday, in fact, you went uh, to the House of Commons uh, and you spoke to the MPs there. And this is something you get to do to really kind of highlight and explain to people the, the situation, mm. the conditions, and to help other people. So that you've done. The money you've raised, I think originally you set your target of £1 million. You've now raised one, uh, £1.134 million. That is rising all the time. If anybody would like to donate some money, if you've been listening mm. to this story today and you feel that you could make a difference, uh, the website you need to go to, donate, giveasyoulive.com forward slash fundraising forward slash Deborah Swim. We'll put that... Uh, on our website and app as well. Isla, Isla, can I just ask you, what, what would you like to see be done? What do you think needs to be done? What's the most important thing that could help the EB community? Um, probably support more medications and, uh, in the end, a cure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, thank you so, so much. We've, we've raised a great deal of money, but yeah. we could never have enough money. You can never. Until we find... A cure, ultimately, mm -hmm. until we find a way to make their lives on a, on a daily basis more acceptable. I mean, I, I, I tell you, so, Isla has recessive dystrophic. There's different levels of EB. This is as bad as it gets. There is one worse, but this, this is this junctional EB, which, unfortunately, poor babies don't last too long. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a sim simplex. Mm -hmm. I met some, of, some people who suffered from that last night, and I said, well, you know, what treatments have you got? Oh, I use, to a lady, they said, I, I, I use E45. I was using E45 mm. 45 years ago with yeah. a bit of dry skin. Yeah. So in 45 years, that's how much we've moved forward. We've not moved forward one inch yeah. in 45 years to help these people. Yeah. We have to do it. So money, the, the kind of money we have raised is a drop in the ocean. The government have to get behind us. How did that uh, meeting go at the House of Well, well you, you know, we're there lobbying, we're there speaking, we're there meeting people, and hopefully, you know... MPs, get you know, behind cross it party, get behind yeah. it and support us yeah. because, because we can never have enough money until we can find a way to help these poor children. And, you know, we're, we're a real country. We're, we're, we've got the best scientists. The, you know, the, we have the best universities. Sure, they can come up with, with answers we'll and, keep banging and, and help these yeah. children. Yeah. Um, go on. Well, I was going to say, Isla, I mean, the channel's very impressive, but I think these two have got another challenge in them. So where would you, what would you like to see them do next? Have we discussed that? <laughs> yeah. so there has been discussions. We don't discuss it. She will tell us. <laughs> she speaks and we'll well, listen. We will leave you to discuss that further now, shall we? Um, Isla, it's so lovely to have you here on the sofa. Well done, you two. Um, before you go, we know that last time uh, when we chatted to you that there was something that you loved more than anything in life, and that was Downton Abbey. You're a big Downton Abbey yeah. fan. Yeah. And you got a message from Jim Carter, didn't you, last yeah, night, which is very great. exciting. 
Well, this time we've got another little surprise for you because the team here have organised for you to go down with your dad to the actual castle called Highclere Castle, and that's where they film Downton Abbey. And you'll be greeted on arrival by Lady Carnarvon herself, and she's going to give you a private tour around the grounds. So that music, that? that follows you around as well. Yeah, it does. Follow <laughs> 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 So enjoy that. Thank Will you, you so send much. Us photos? That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. I'm there as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank well you. done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well well done. Well done. Well done, all of you over there. Well done, guys. Discussing the next challenge, I think. <laughs> Wolfie's just lining up for Gino's cocktails. Okay. <laughs> uh, donate uh, dot give as you live dot, uh, dot com forward slash fundraising forward slash uh, Deborah Swim. Yeah. Listen, best of luck. And thank can you. Can I just much. add one little Bruce thing? Yeah. Can, there is another, another member, Andy, who's our top man yeah. in terms of swim. He couldn't be here, so a big thank you to Andy. Of course. Well Brilliant. done, Andy. Thank you. Right. So